prime factorization is when we take a number and we express it as a product of prime numbers. What are prime numbers? Prime numbers are numbers that are only divisible by one and itself. So some examples of some prime numbers, 11. The number 11, you can only divide it by 11, sorry, by 1 and by 11. Same thing with 7, same thing with 13. Uh, these are prime numbers. An example of a number that is not a prime number would be, say, the number 12, because we can divide 12 not only by 1 and 12, but by 2 and by 4 and by 3 and by 6 and so on. So that number would not be a prime number. So say we had a number such as 68, and we wanted to express this number as a product of prime numbers. This means write it as a bunch of numbers, prime numbers, that are multiplied together. One of the common ways of doing this is by simply using a factor tree. And what a factor tree is, is we take the number 68, and you just find two numbers that you can multiply to get 68. I'm going to, I know that I can divide it by 2 because it's an even number, and I would get 34. 2 now is a prime number because I can only divide the number 2 by 1 and itself, 2. So that's a prime number. I'm going to circle that. 34, though, I can still divide by 2, and I would get 17. Now, 2 is a prime number. I can only divide it by 1 and 2, and 17 is also a prime number. You can only divide 17 by 1 and itself. So if I wanted to write 68 as a product of prime numbers, it would be 2 times 2 times 17. That is the prime factorization of the number 68. Let's try another one. Let's try the number 180. Well, I know I can divide 180 by 10. That would be 10 times 18. Now, 10 is not prime, and neither is 18. So I'm going to take the number 10, and I can divide 10 by 2, and that would give me 5. 2 is a prime number, and so is 5 a prime number. So I'm going to circle those. They're prime. That branch of the tree is done. But 18 was not prime. I can divide 18 by 2, and that would give me 9. 2 times 9 is 18. 2 is a prime number, so I'm going to circle that. That branch is done. But 9, I can, of course, divide by 3, and that would leave me 3. And both of these are prime numbers. So now I have finished. I have all of my prime numbers. I can now write 180 as a product of 2. I'm going to do this in ascending order. So 2 times 2 times 3 times another 3, and times 5. That's not a bad idea to actually double check that you do have them all here by multiplying them out again, because it's sometimes easy to miss one. 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 3 is 12, 12 times 3 is 36, 36 times 5 is, yes, 180. So there's the prime factorization of the number 180. We can also look at something that's called the greatest common factor. The greatest common factor is the greatest factor that the numbers have in common. So if we look at the two numbers here, 180 and 68, if we are asked to find the greatest common factor, we're looking for the largest number that we can divide into 68 and 180. Now you could kind of do this by trial and error, and eventually you might find the number that would divide into both of those, and you'd pick the, the largest one. But when we have the prime factors listed out here, it's very easy to find the greatest common factor because we just need to circle the factors that are in common. So both of them have a factor of two, both of them have another factor of two. This one has a 17, but this one does not. This one has two threes and a five, but this has no threes and no fives. So for these two numbers, the greatest common factor 
would be 2 times 2 or 4. 4 would be the largest number that you could divide into 180 and 68. Let's look at a couple of more. Let's look at 150 and 45. And let's do the uh, prime factorization and then try to determine what their greatest common factor is. So 150, I can divide that by 10. That would leave 15. And 10 is 2 times 5. And 15 is 5 times 3. And these are all now prime numbers. So 150 is 2 times 3 times 5 times 5. Let's look at 45. 45 uh, is 9 times 5. 9 we can write as 3 times 3. Those are both prime numbers. And, whoops, 5 already is prime. So, Those are our three prime factors of 45, and we can, we can write 45 as 3 times 3 times 5. Now, for the greatest common factor, let's see what they have in common. This has a 2, no 2s. This has a 3, yes, we have a 3 over here. This one has a 5, this one has a 5. And... That is it. There's no more 5s in here, and there's no more 3s in here. So, uh, 3 times 5 means that the greatest common factor, or GCF, the greatest common factor would be 15. Another term that we need to look at is the lowest common multiple. The lowest common multiple is simply the smallest number that each of your numbers can divide into. So let's look at two numbers, 6 and 8. What we mean by the lowest common multiple is the smallest number that you can find that we can divide into, that, that 6 and 8 can divide into. So you could, again, use trial and error and start thinking of some numbers, but... Maybe one of the easiest ways is to just start multiplying each of them out. So 6 times 1 is 6, 6 times 2 is 12, 6 times 3 is 18. These are numbers that we can divide by 6. Um, so 6 times 1, 6 times 2, 6 times 3, 6 times 4, 6 times 5. Let's just stop here for now. And let's do the same thing with 8. 8 times 1 is 8. 8 times 2 is 16, times 3 is 24. Oh, look what we've got right here. We've now found a number that is the same in both of these cases. This would be what we call the lowest common multiple. This is the smallest number that we can divide by 6 and by 8. So 24, we would say, is the... LCM, lowest common multiple of 6 and 8. That's how we would find the lowest common multiple. We'll look at one more example. Let's find the least common multiple of 7 and 12. Well, I'm going to start with 12. 12 times 1 times 2 times 3, times 4, times 5. Let's just stop here and let's do some on 7. 7 times 1, times 2, so far no luck. Close, but not the same. Oops. 
still no luck. Let's try some of these because we've exceeded these ones now. So another 1272, another 1284, another 1296. Let's try some more on the sevens. 84. Oh, there we go. 84. So the least common multiple of those two numbers is 84. 84 is the smallest number that you can divide 7 and 12 into. Let's review those three concepts we've talked about. Prime factorization, then, is when we write the number as a product of its prime factors. Prime being a number that you can only divide by 1 and itself. So if we take the number 30, we can split that up to 2 and 15. 15 we can say is 3 times 5. Then these are all the prime factors. So 30 will equal 2 times 3 times 5. That's the prime factorization of the number 30. 20 can be written as 2 times 10. 10 can be written as 2 times 5. These are now prime factors. And so the number 20 can be written as 2 times 2 times 5. That would be the prime factorization of the number 20. The greatest common factor is the greatest factor that the numbers would have in common. So here we've list listed the prime factors of 30 again and the prime factors of 20. We've circled the factors that are the same. These would be the greatest common factor. 2 times 5 is 10. 10 is the largest number that we can divide into 30 and 20. And then going the other way, the least common multiple is finding the smallest number that these two numbers that can divide into. So this is where we start with 30 and we multiply it by 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and so on. And we take the number 20 and we multiply it by 1 and 2 and 3 and so on. And we can get these, these multiples of these numbers. We can see that there's a number 120 here that's showing up the same, but there's a smaller number than that. The number 60 is showing up the same. We're looking for the least common multiple, so 60 is the smallest number that both 30 and 20 can divide into. It's the least common multiple.